Hey there, this is Ken from Singapore. In this episode, I'm sharing two restaurants I went to in Japan, namely Bincho Ogiya and Uobe. Bincho Ogiya serves yakitori and Uobe is a kaiten zushi chain. I'll first talk about Bincho Ogiya, the yakitori restaurant. The restaurant we went to was located in Utsunomiya, Tochigi Prefecture. Yakitori literally means grilled chicken, but the term has come to refer to in general all types of grilled food on a stick or a skewer. The bincho in bincho ogiya refers to bincho tan, a traditional white charcoal of Japan produced mostly from ubame oak. This bincho tan burns long, clean and even, even presumably emits infrared rays. What this means is that yakitori grilled using bincho tan will taste awesome. So without further ado, let's take a look at the items we munched on. These are the yakitori moriawase or combination platters. The darker set on the left is slathered with teri sauce, and the lighter one on the right is sprinkled in shio, a kind of salt pepper mix. The items themselves are the same seven types, but you do get twice the enjoyment with the two distinct styles of seasoning. So you get in each platter the below seven items. Yakitori the signature grilled chicken, tori negima or chicken with spring onions, bonjiri the tail meat, tebasaki or chicken wing, tori ninniku which is chicken with garlic, kawa chicken skin, and uzura tamago quail's egg. Both the tari sauce and shio versions tasted really good. The tari sauce is a secret recipe passed down the generations and the shio is a blend of select natural rock salt with Malayan black pepper. So I was really spoiled for choice and couldn't decide which I liked over the other. With the chef's certified grilling skills and the use of bincho tan white charcoal, you are basically assured to get perfectly grilled flavour on the outside and tender juiciness on the inside, whatever you choose to order. Uh, just recalling it makes my mouth water. In between enjoying the yakitori, we added on some side dishes. This is tori momo or chicken thigh. It was done just to the right degree and was also tender. Here you have nikomi, a kind of oval stew or hodgepodge. I don't know how they do it, but it had absolutely no hint of gaminess, whatever, despite being awful. These squarish pieces are tako chijimi, bincho ogiya's take on everyone's favorite savory pancake of Korea, chewy savoriness, cut to bite sized portions. Here you have french fries with ketchup which is a condiment actually not that common in Japan. These are fried fingerlings which tasted like shishamo but without the roll. Tsukune moriyawase platter. Tsukune is a kind of chicken meatball. I kind of thought it tasted like a most generous, juiciest burger patty but with crunchy veggie bits in it. We had the cheese and original versions of the perfectly balanced tsukune, which were topped off with either salt, tare, Japanese sauce, mayo or mayonnaise, or any combination of these three. Again, I can't really decide or recall which mix is the best. All I could remember was that I was happily munching away melting away like the cheese and gastronomic bliss. Bincho Ogiya even offers kamameshi, a favourite iron pot rice dish. 
The version I had was Matsutake or Pine Mushroom. It looks plain, but don't let that fool you. The distinct pine mushroom goodness sips into every grain of the rice. And when you scrape off the slightly burnt rice at the bottom, the taste is just umamilicious. By this time, we were wonderfully satiated, satisfied to the fullest, and rounded it all up the traditional way with a bowl of ochazuke, a kind of savory soup rice. I'm pretty sure I gained over 2 kilos in just one sitting at this bincho ogia with the irresistible bincho tan white chako style yakitori, but I had no regrets. The next eatery I have to share is called Uobe, a kaiten sushi fast food type of restaurant. This is the brunch we went to. Kaiten sushi would directly mean rotating or revolving sushi, but it's now commonly understood to be sushi placed on a conveyor belt. As for the restaurant's name, Uo means fish and Be means rice. So straight away, I like the restaurant's candid sense, the sincere way of doing things, striving to serve the best value and taste at pocket-friendly prices. At around 108 yen a dish, Uobe is a real steal for the taste, variety and value it offers. I think that Japan's really fortunate to be surrounded by so much good food that they actually think of Kaiten Sushi as a kind of fast food. It could be that it's because I'm no gome, but I can say in all honesty that the sushi I had at Uobe was already a real treat for me. I mean, you simply can't go wrong at a place where the food arrives looking the same or sometimes even better than what's shown in the menu, can you? Basically, there's more fish than rice, but don't get me wrong. The rice itself was most tasty and just the right amount for me too. Hot water was offered on free flow by this neat design of a tap affixed right to the table. And so was the green tea, which came in powdered form. So you are free to mix to your own liking and drink all you like to. So here are some of the sushi we helped ourselves to. Actually, most came in twos, but I was in kind of shock or trance that the 100 yen sushi could taste so good that I only remembered to take pictures halfway through. I started off with the more familiar looking ones like this AB10 or fried shrimp fritter. The shrimp was so fresh, its sweetness brought out further by skillful deep frying. This is AB10 monkey or stream fritter roll. Sesame seeds and the reverse wrapping of rice and seaweed tempt your taste buds as you bite into the delectable stream mini umami bomb at the center. Some inari sushi or sweet tofu pouch sushi. This came in a variation I've not seen before called the Kokuto inari. Kokuto means mascavado or molasses sugar and it imparted quite an intense flavor. Tekkamaki, mini sushi rolls with tuna at the center. Popcorn sized savory delights. Shime saba, vinegar pickled mackerel. This one's an acquired taste. I kind of liked it. Ni anago, simmered saltwater conger ales. The anago I had was leaner than unagi, their freshwater counterparts, but they were equally soft, tasty, and melt in your mouth with a lightly sweet aftertaste. Pair of salmon and engawa, which is the meat at the base of a fin, usually of a flat fish went really well with a dab of wasabi and shoyu. OAB, literally big prawn. This was more to the size of crayfish and tasted like lobster. 
イナフセイツブガイアカニシガイ Types of whelks from the sea I don't really know my whelks but both tasted like an interesting crunchy cross between seaweed and oyster カッパマキキュカンバロース Legend has it that they are the favorite of the カッパ a mythical river creature Light, crunchy and refreshing It also helped in resetting my palate in between so many mouthfuls of umami Besides sushi rotating on the conveyor belt There was a tablet on which you could tap on orders and have them made just for you In Uobe, these custom orders will literally ride on the bullet train or Formula 1 sports car and arrive within your hands reach right beside your table Perhaps this is the other reason the Japanese term kaiten sushi as fast food Anyway, here is the neat invention on tape This is hotate, raw scallop on rice. A first for me, as the occasional scallop I get in Singapore is usually dried or cooked. It tasted much different from dried or cooked scallop. The raw hotate was almost cloyingly sweet, but still managed to do so in a light and pleasant manner, if that makes any sense at all. And this is kaki. What's better than raw oysters? Raw jumbo oyster topped with sublime plum sauce and balanced on koshi curry rice. One bite and I was in sushi heaven. At least for a few blissful seconds. In all seriousness, this should be considered for food therapy for depression or something. An hour later, A kilo heavier, I walked out of Uobe. Well, it may be just somewhere to eat out for my Japanese friends. For me, I was really impressed by the extremely high value, taste, and variety Uobe offers. Fish rice, chicken rice, I love them all. On this note, we have come to the end of the sixth episode of my Japan Autumn Dream series. This has been Ken from Singapore. Mitte itadaki, arigatou gozaimashita. Hope you have enjoyed the clip and thanks for watching. Peace out.